Hello, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Melinda Rose, and this is Light Matters for June 27th, 2012. On this week's show, lasers find moon ice, twisting light superspeeds data transmission, fluorescing paint detects stress and strain, the plasmonic capabilities of graphene are brought to light, and an all-carbon solar cell harnesses near IR light. Using a laser, NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter found that ice may make up as much as 22% of the Shackleton crater's floor. Astronomers have puzzled for two years over the fact that the floor of the crater on the moon's south pole, which never gets any sunlight, is brighter than those of other nearby craters. Using LRO's laser altimeter to illuminate the crater's interior, astronomers mapped it with unprecedented detail by measuring the reflectivity of its floor and walls. The ultra-high resolution map provides strong evidence that ice appears in both places. Such ice could prove valuable for researchers to understand crater formation and to study uncharted areas of the moon. LRO launched in June 2009 to conduct investigations in preparation for future lunar exploration. With its primary mission complete, the craft is now carrying out science experiments. Twisted beams of light are able to transmit 85,000 times more data per second than broadband cable, a new study shows. An international team used beam-twisting phase holograms to manipulate eight beams of light so that each twisted in a DNA-like helical shape as it propagated in free space. Each beam has its own individual twist and can be encoded with one and zero data bits, making each an independent data stream much like separate radio channels. The data was transmitted over open space in a lab, attempting to simulate the sort of communications that might occur between satellites in space. Among the next steps for the research will be to see how it can be adapted for use in fiber optics. The research was funded by DARPA under the Information in a Photon program. Strain is usually measured through gauges attached directly to the structure to be monitored, but a new carbon nanotube infused paint enables the same detection with no contact at all. The strain paint mixture developed at Rice University detects deformations in structures like airplane wings, buildings, and bridges before they become visible to the naked eye because the paint would experience the same strain as the surface it coats. To measure airplane stress, technicians typically apply conventional strain gauges at specific locations on the wing and subject it to force vibration testing. They can only do this on the ground and can only measure part of the wing in specific directions and locations where the strain gauges are wired. But with the non-contact technique, they could aim the laser at any point on the wing and get a strain map along any direction. The goal is for the composite coating to be read by a handheld infrared spectrometer. The study was published online in Nano Letters. The plasmonic capabilities of graphene, atom-thick sheets of carbon touted as a revolutionary material, were demonstrated by two separate studies led by teams in the U.S. and Spain. Both found that graphene is an excellent host for guiding, confining, and electrically manipulating light, properties desirable for plasmonic devices. Both groups observed this effect with near-field optical microscopy, and each team showed that the properties of these plasmons can be controlled using a gate voltage. The ability to tune plasmons could facilitate the design and development of plasmonic devices for use in telecommunications and information processing. Graphene's ability to trap light in very small volumes could also give rise to a new generation of nanosensors with applications in areas such as biodetection, solar cells, and light detectors. The two research experiments were published in separate reports in Nature. A new all-carbon solar cell outperforms today's photovoltaic systems by tapping into a totally unused region of the solar spectrum, the near-infrared. Some 40% of the sunlight reaching Earth is in the near-infrared region, which no current solar cell can use. Because the new system is made of nanoscale materials, the cells will require only small amounts of highly purified carbon, and they could be very lightweight. Because the new cell developed at MIT is transparent to visible light, it could be overlaid onto conventional solar cells, creating a tandem device that could harness most of the energy in sunlight. But the cells will need refining. So far, the early proof-of-concept devices have an energy conversion rate of only about 0.1%. Still, the team says it is well on the way to achieving very high efficiency near-infrared solar cells. The research was published in Advanced Materials. Well, that's it for this edition of Light Matters, the industry's only weekly newscast. We'd like to hear from you. Tell us what you like or don't like about our program. We welcome your comments and suggestions at lightmatters at photonics.com. You'll find links to share and subscribe to Light Matters by clicking the Share with Friends button on our video player. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.
Thank you.